I have this 2024 KTM 690 SMCR Supermoto. I fully customize it. it. has all the performance mods on it. It's got all uh, the looks mods on it. It's where it looks awesome now. It looks better than stock. Um, I've had this for a few months now. And I'm going to tell you why I will not buy another KTM motorcycle again. Let's go for a ride. Today. First off, before I tell you why I will never buy another KTM motorcycle, now I know that's going to upset some of you guys out there, and I'll get to that in a minute, but I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter what motorcycle you're riding out there, make sure you're wearing the gear to stay safe, and I have links to my awesome gear, like my favorite helmet, my ultra lightweight carbon fiber helmet that comes with an automatic tint shield, my new Motovlog camera airbag vest to help keep you safe, shorty gloves, CE armor jacket, links to all my gear is in the description and comment section of this video. I'm glad that I tried this bike, uh, to be honest with you, um, because I had been wanting to try one for many, going all the way back to 2015 with the 690 Enduro R that I was going to buy, but I passed on it and got the WR250R, which I'm glad I did, because that's a better uh, starter dual sport bike. You know, even though I rode super bikes and super sports, you know, fast street bikes, Getting into the dual sport world, I'm glad I started small with the WR250R and gained some skills and confidence with the smaller bike and then worked my way up. Um, you know, I got the YZ450FX custom supermoto um, that is my favorite. I, I like that better bike better than this bike, to be honest with you. Uh, it's more fun, a little bit more fun, I'll tell you, but it requires so much more maintenance than this bike. That's why I love this bike because it's so low maintenance. But I will tell you this. What has me really concerned about this bike, um, even though I haven't had any problems so far, but I haven't even hit a thousand miles on this bike yet. I haven't even done a first service on this bike yet, man. I have multiple bikes, as you guys know. I also own a, a 2022 Yamaha MTL7, and of course my 2019 YZ450FX Custom Supermoto. So I split my time between the bikes. I don't ride a lot because I've been doing a lot of renovations to my house and uh, which I'm finally done after two years, man. Gosh, uh, now I'll be able to ride more, take some motor van, motor van trips and everything. I look forward to, to doing some new adventures with this channel um, and having some fun. But I'm going to tell you this. I did have one problem with this bike so far, I will mention, is that I was red bombing the hell out of it stupidly. And I heard a big pop and the bike cut off. My motor cut off. I don't know what happened, bro. And I thought I was stranded, man. But luckily, I got the bike started back up. But I haven't had a problem since then. But I'm telling you, since I got this KTM, um, I've had a flood. I've had a lot of people leave comments that also own this bike that have had problems. Nothing but problems. There's a motor vlogger. Uh, name, uh, his goes by the name of Life Well Ridden. And uh, he's had this bike and chronicled his journey with his uh, his 690 SMCR. Did all the mod, did tons of mods, and more even more mods than I did. He did all the same mods, but even more. And uh, I think the engine—I forgot exactly what happened—but it caused the engine to, to to blow up. So that was very concerning to hear that. But also, I've had a slew of comments lately from people that own this bike. One guy said he has a 2023. 690 SMCR and he his first one he got had some oil leak he took it back and then uh, he ended up getting a new bike they give him a, a new one and he ended up having oil leak with that so it has me concerned about an oil leak with this bike I'm gonna be make sure to check often man because um, honestly that's the biggest concern I've ever had with uh, the KTM and, and the European bikes basically is them not being reliable and having problems and, and these it's very expensive to fix these bikes man but the parts are expensive when it's out of warranty um, and then even within the warranty sometimes they don't want to fix stuff because you did you modded the bike so I'm telling you if I have a problem with this bike and they don't want to fix it they're gonna get blasted on YouTube I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell everybody but I just don't feel confident uh, with the reliability on this bike yet. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to keep it that long. I'll, I'll be selling it next year for sure. 
And um, I just, honestly, and not just because of that, it is a fun bike, but honestly, my YZ is more fun to me, to be honest with you, because this bike, although it is maybe a little bit faster than the YZ, uh, but it's not as wild and crazy as my YZ. You know what I'm saying? And the YZ wheelies easier than this. This thing, this thing wheelies, it's, I, I can't, I'm not, I'm not the best at wheelies anyhow, but I absolutely am terrible with this, trying to bust a wheelie on this thing, man. Because the electronics on here, you got to make sure to turn the stupid traction control off. Either that or you got to buy a stupid $100 dongle to cut the ABS off or traction control to retain the setting. So every time you cut the bike on, you don't have to cut the stupid traction control off. Um, so I, I hate, that's why I told you guys, the electronics ruin a bike for me, in my opinion. Now the electronics may be wonderful for the track. But for just crapping around out here on the streets, we don't need electronics, man. Uh, my MT-07 has no electronics. I, I love it. That's why I'm one of the biggest reasons why I love that bike. Doesn't have the stupid electronics on it, man. Bottom line, it comes down to me really not trusting this bike. Um, especially after that pop and it cut off on me. Like I said, I haven't had a problem since, but it has me concerned. I had thought about possibly trying out a KTM uh, 890 Duke or whatever but honestly I don't think I'm going to do that bro I, I don't think I'm going to really be messing with KTM and they got way too many electronics on the bike people got problems I hear nothing but problems people coming to my channel telling me problems with all the KTMs they had now I do have a few of you guys that have left comments and told me that you've had trouble free KTMs, no problems. Cycle Cruiser, quit being paranoid. Quit worrying. Just enjoy your bike. You'll be all right, man. You know, you know me, man. <laughs> I be worrying because when I have, you have problems, it pisses me off. You know what I'm saying? I don't like having problems. I like trouble-free riding like I get with my Japanese motorcycles. I've had no, all, the only problems I ever had with motorcycles are from the European bikes, man. Namely, the Italian motorcycles I had, the Ducati X Diavo and the Aprilia Tuano V4 1100 Factory. Had problems with both of them, man. And I got rid of both of them in a timely manner. <laughs> Let's go do some off road action on this for the very first time. All right, it's been a while, man. Been a long time. All right, just ride up here. Yeah, baby. Hopefully, I, right now, I'm rocking this new action camera here, man. So, I'm curious to see how good it is in low light, the low light performance of it. Oh, I hope this isn't muddy because I will get stuck back here because these are street tires and they suck on... Uh... Yeah, baby. We out here doing some trail action out here on my 690 SMCR, baby. Yeah, first time ever. And I have regular stock street tires on here. And uh, we'll see, man. But you cannot ride a supermoto like a dual sport. You can't stand up, dude. Got to stay seated. Keep your feet down. <laughs> um you know what I'm saying? Because you don't have that 21 inch front wheel that can easily ride over everything, man. So you gotta, you gotta treat it very carefully, man. And uh, so far this bike feels good, man. Even though I ain't doing nothing, but it feels good just cruising here on this trail. Now let's make sure I can get out of here, dude. <laughs> it's getting dark. We'll get up on out of here, baby. Uh oh. How do I get out of here, dude? Follow the trail. Follow the trail. Don't want to get. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Hopefully, I can get out of here, man. Don't want to get lost in the woods, that's for sure. 
Okay, we're going off the beat path here. Okay, that looks sketchy. I'm going back the way I came, dude. <laughs> Don't want to get lost here. Let's get out of here, man. Yeah, baby, some dual sport action up in here. <laughs> hey, that's fun, man. Even though I had my blinker on the whole time. Man, I tell you, I get scared in the woods because as far as at night getting, it's get turned at nighttime. Because I tell you, at my property I had out in uh, Georgia, I had, I lived in the middle of the woods. And I actually got lost on my property in the woods, man, at night. Scared the crap out of me, man. Luckily, I was able to find somebody's property and get out of there. But that freaked me out, man. I'm telling you, the last thing you want to do is get lost in the woods at night by yourself, man. So, I always get panicked. I start to panic when I'm in the woods and when it's getting dark like this. I didn't plan this, by the way. This was just kind of an ad-lib thing that I did, man. <laughs> by the way, this bike feels good off-road. It feels, it did, I didn't feel the weight as much as I thought I would, even though I didn't do nothing serious. Uh, but honestly, my YZ obviously feels a whole lot better off-road, but this actually did pretty good man not bad i definitely don't want to ride this in in wet conditions in the woods guys you will get stuck with these street tires make sure to hit thumbs up hit the subscribe button hit that little bell symbol so you get notified when my new videos release but i release new videos every sunday tuesday and thursday at 11:30 a.m eastern standard time until next time